Uh, everyone, please give your undivided attention to uh, Marissa. I'll give a notification at five minutes through, and we have 30 seconds left. Okay. So go ahead. So hello, uh, I'm Marissa Swanger, and tonight I'll be talking to you about the price of FNNs and what it's doing to both the producer and consumer. So the problem is here is that the producers are taking advantage of the consumers and that the price of an EpiPens are dangerously too high. So who is the consumer? The consumer is anyone who has um, severe allergic reactions to things such as um, insect stings, bites, and then food or drug allergies. And the producer is a healthcare company called Mylon, and they're the only um, healthcare company to produce and sell EpiPens, so essentially they're in monopoly. So what is Mylon charging? Back in 2008, they were charging $100 for a pack of two, and now they're charging $600 for a pack of two. You can't just buy one pen. They, comes in, they come in sets of twos because just in case the first pen doesn't work, they have to have the second dose to help save you. Um, it's estimated that 3.6 million people are prescribed a pen, and that was back in 2015, but that's not necessarily how many people actually have a pen due to the high prices and not being able to afford them. And then the pens expire after 12 months, so the price keeps going up even if you bought it or not, or used it or not. And it's also recommended that um, you buy three, um, so you have one at your home, like with you at all times, like in your car, in your purse, something like that, and then at your school or work. So that $600 is going up to like $1,200, $1,800 really quick because you never know when you're going to need it. Um, of course, there's insurance but all insurance plans are different, and most, all like the EpiPen website, it covers about like half most insurances, so that's like $300. And then also on the like official EpiPen website, um, there's a $300 coupon, but the coupon, if you read in fine print, it's actually um, a savings card, and it can be only used up to six times, um, and that's only if you have commercial health insurance. So if you don't have insurance, or if you have insurance, covered by the government, um, you can't use that. So the card, essentially, after so long, you can't use it. And saying, like, they recommend having three, and saying that you don't use it, that's two years, and then you can never use it again. So you're paying the $600 or more every year. Um, the cost to produce a pen, so, like, my line, they're the price makers. They're the only company in the industry to make them. So essentially, they can charge whatever they want because, um, well, EpiPen, if you need it, you're gonna pay the price because you never know. So it costs around 20 to $30 to produce it, and then that's a profit about like 540 per two pack. And the drug itself that goes into the pen only costs about a dollar to produce. So it's pretty high on profit. So if you're looking to go into the stock of Mylan, it's actually a pretty good, this graph shows that, um, from Yahoo Finance. Um, as of March um, 28, 2017, um, it's a good investment. Um, out of 21 Yahoo experts, five say it's a strong buy, um, eight said that it was a good buy, and then eight say to hold. So no one said to sell it or anything, that's a pretty um, strong buy. So if you can look past what the company is doing to the consumers, um, it's potentially a great investment. So in conclusion, these life-saving devices are priced way too high. The prices of the pens are life-threatening, and if people can't afford the EpiPens, what could happen to them? They won't get their pens, they could potentially be in the hospital, stuff like that, and then, but the problem is here, the FDA, FDA is not allowing other companies into the market. So once the FDA allows other competitors into the market to sell these, that's when the prices will essentially drop because there's competitors and the prices, uh, Mylan won't be a price maker anymore as per se. In conclusion, really the high prices of prescription drugs is what's going to end up killing people. The prices are supposed to be saving lives, but essentially they're gonna end up killing people because people can't afford their um, medicine and that could cause problems. Thank you.